So right now we're on Kahala Avenue. You can refer to our California versus Hawaii video, but Kahala is kind of the La Jolla, the Beverly Hills, the Marin, Presidio. Batting in this price range, homes are inevitably gonna sit more often. So in this market, in a normal price range, a sub two million price range in this current market, you can expect to sell the home the first week. When you go north of five million, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten million. million, that home's not necessarily going to move that fast. That is why you see the increased inventory. You see multiple for sale signs, etc., because it takes a while for stuff to move. Okay, so we are turning left onto Black Point Road, which Black Point is, there's a prestige. And this is perfect setting. So you have Diamond Head in front of us. You have these two tourists on their mopeds. I would venture, I would bet they're staying in Waikiki. So that's how close you are to Waikiki, you know? You know, this is some of the higher end real estate in all of Hawaii right here. We can't go into where we would love to get to. What, going behind the brada? No, this isn't a place where you wanna tailgate somebody in and trespass for sure you know so i was born in the south i like porches you know i like seeing grandma just rocking you roll up and there's rocking on a porch hanging out i like playing cards and eating breakfast out on the porch hawaii real estate tip you know classic entry level hawaii real estate you can't make sense of building out this porch or this big deck because your lot size is only so big your house is only so big if you were designing that home from the ground up, if you're gonna have a 400 foot porch, well, that could be 400 foot of interior space. I really like that, all that porch space. If I had to throw a number out, it's hard to tell how deep the home goes and what the views are on the other side. I wanna venture to say like six to seven million. In Las Vegas, for example, to make sense of living in the desert, I mean, the strip view is nice, but it's not as nice as this view, right? This one, oh, they did a good job with their landscaping and keeping it private. So you have the the steel gate, straight 90 degree angles of concrete and windows. And I actually really like that too. But I know my wife would, would rather have the chimney hall. Let's pull over at this last diamond head lookout. And let's catch some shade. Hawaii pro tip, always look for the trees. You might have to, you know, clean up some bird mess, but you have the trees. I guess I'm standing in what you could consider diamond head, because this is probably considered the last diamond head lookout. But there's a house right there. Like I could hit it with a, a soft throw. And that's probably, I guess, the first house in Kahala. This is the allure of Kahala. There are ocean views and mountain settings, cliff settings, you know, multiple places in Hawaii. But as far as Oahu goes, having this elevated view of the ocean, I want an elevated view, but I also don't want to be far from the ocean in, in an ideal world. So I can go to Makakilo and get a big ocean view but I'm still like 15 minutes from getting in the water and surfing, right? Maybe more. I could go to Hawaii Kai, like where we showed our $3.2 million purchase uh, in one of our other videos. Go up there and get an amazing view. The price of having that view though is being so far from the ocean. Kahala is that place where you can be right there, still smell the ocean, be in a better flood zone. Topographically, is that the right word? Like we're not that far from the ocean. Accessing it's gonna take a little while, but we're just, we're right here. Better view. Great access, because there's trails that go down here to the Diamond Head Surf Breaks, Lighthouses. It's just everything in one. And if you want to go work in town or eat a nice dinner in town or whatever, it's, it's right on the other side of this. We're at the tip and town is just right there. The homes are mid ones to two million. And then there's a reason why Black Point and these places like this you see listings for 25 million. So enough about all the allure and stuff, at least for right now. Local tip, Diamond Head always has waves. So I grew up surfing. I used to compete a little. One of my better placements or finishes was over here. I got second place to my friend Koa, who's like a pro. I don't belong in the same competition with him, but uh, Diamond Head always has waves, but it's also almost always windy. Waikiki could be flat. You can't even surf Waikiki, whatever. Diamond Head will have something. When it's super windy though, there's wind surfers out here. So you gotta be careful. And then you also wanna know where to hike, like know where to get down there. Another pro tip, we say Hawaii has the strongest like pull off on the side of the road and eat culture. I mean, it's just the weather's great and it's so beautiful. So you see a number of people, look, brother behind me here is grinding. You get your bento, you get your plate lunch, and you come to the Diamond Head Lookout. So that's the mix you're gonna see here as you go into Kahala. Tourists walking, people exercising, mopeds, surfers hiking down the hill, and then local people 
pulling off on the side with their plate lunch, I bet you I could find 10 right now. For me, it's like a, it's a special thing because it's something I always did with my parents. You get your bento or you go pull off, sit right here and eat. It's an amazing thing, but we'll go check out the rest of Kahala. With the whole spiel I just did, just like any uh, lookout anywhere, changes at night. So the people that are here at night are here for different reasons. The cute thoughts you're having, but also just not a place you'd want to hang out at night, uh, I would say, as well. We're on the way to Cromwell. For me, for my wife, you know, we will eventually be able to afford that home, but we we'll probably want something a little more cozy. But who knows? Somebody wearing shoes on the beach today. And I, I was just thinking how I'm disappointed that uh, I don't have my surf shorts because I would rather do this portion of this video in surf shorts and actually get in the water. Shooting these videos only feels a touch like work because we love it. But anytime I get to go dip in the ocean while we're shooting the videos, I feel like I'm cheating in life. Ripping that house? No, I'm not uh, selling that one. What was your name? Sabrina. Thank you for talking with us. My my name is Derek. I am a real estate agent, ah, but I'm not selling this that. one. So you grew up in the neighborhood? Yeah, the very last house on the end on the right was my grandma's house. Going to Cromwell's? Yeah. Oh, wow. Actually, they did a good job on it. It's pretty sweet what they did, but it was bought and sold eight times after we sold it. There's no doubt that in this community, on that street, with that ocean, that view, that that's a special piece of real estate. Maybe you don't even call it real estate, yeah? Just a special piece of this island. How would you describe Kahala to people on the mainland or other islands? How would you describe this area? You grew up here. Your grandma's house is- Yeah, I never thought of this as Kahala. I always yeah. thought of Kahala starting after Black Point. Oh. So it's off the flat Kahala Bay. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. That is of that Kahala Beach. Yeah. I think of this as I live around Diamond Head near the lighthouse. Almost before I was super little, I my folks would tell me about we'd go in the station wagon to the pig farms. There's farms over here? Lots of pig farms. Really? I remember there was nothing here. It was all raw land. It was just our house, a couple others, and we went through through the tunnels, through the sewers up to Diamond Head and built tree forts. We'd sneak a little what? desk and we'd make school up with all the kiabi thorns, but we were all akamai about how to traverse. And we'd come wow. through tunnels and then after a while you couldn't do that anymore. But you know, there'd all of a sudden be development here. I know we were trekking up here and there were no houses. I was born on the mainland and then I moved to Hawaii when I was 10, but my dad, he was a Waikiki beach boy. He's 77 now. What's his name? Uh, Harry Okahashi. Because they babysat me. Man, they, yeah. I'd be dropped off there. My parents would come at sunset and pick me up. They yeah. totally took care of me. He he worked in front of the Sheraton a lot. But uh -huh. He said Duke used to scold him like, hey, go school, guys. When I would go Cromwell's with my auntie them, they would always like tell me the story. Oh, that's Jim Neighbors' house. In that era, he was a big star that lived here, yeah? yeah? Gomer Pyle, you yeah. know that? He's like, Shazam, Shazam, that guy, yeah? yeah. So I'm sure there's a bunch of other famous people around I mean, here, too. I remember the owners before that, Anita Hecht, and... Of that home? Oh, yeah, I'd come in diapers, and I would steal the chocolates, or, you know, just like, I don't know, if you could walk, maybe you're out of diapers, but I'd walk from our house up, and yeah. she had all these chocolates in these drawers. And, wow. And then in Doris Stoop, we'd play hide-and-seek and tra traverse the wall, steal the flaming, fake flamingo out of the lotus pond. And then my dad would go, don't do anything like that. And you never cheat and steal and then yeah, you have to yeah. go put it back. Yeah, so Black Point could be from six to 11 to yeah. 25 million. It used to be 1 million was the big number. There's like an Ossipot house for 3.1 million and last year it was 2 million. And yeah. the Honolulu Art Academy owned it as an asset. God, I was thinking 3.3 billion. That's just so much money. You still live in this neighborhood? No, I don't. I'm on the backside. Pool A Circle. Oh, Pool A Circle is nice. That's what I could afford. I was like a lomi lomi massage therapist. Yeah, I grew yeah. Up there, but I, that was a lot for me to pay for. It's always appreciating my sister and brother-in-law their little the leilani in the middle it's uh -huh. like 900 just one soul like two doors away that's mega huge million fifty is the median home price on oahu right now trying to cement your position in hawaii it's 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 oh. 
It's hard, right? So many people, all ages. Yeah. It breaks my heart. And then the jobs are like this big corporation, I don't know, I mean, that can afford it. It's not our people. Thank you for chatting with us. I could do that all day. I appreciate every moment of talking to you. Yeah, so that was interesting. A local auntie. Some people might say, oh, not local. Hey, that lady grew up here. Her family lived, you know, on this island. She has my respect. She's a local auntie. She stopped to talk story with us, which is cool. We got that, that different local's perspective of what this used to be like. And so she was saying, there's not, there wasn't even this road here, you know? This house at the end that we're gonna look at was actually her grandma's house. Like, I'm really grateful that uh, we're making a real estate video and we got to talk to a generations ago local about this neighborhood. On a more grand scale, that's just Hawaii. Like, just a nice conversation with a stranger. We have all the feels today, you know? Like the salt, the, the sun, the winds, the diamond head lookout, you know, referencing my dad and how we used to go take you know, bento's over there. Littlefreelibrary.org. I mean, this isn't unique to this neighborhood. You, I There's one of these in Mililani where I live, but I think it speaks to what they're trying to maintain here. Like, I like my espresso a certain way, don't get me wrong, because I've earned the ability to enjoy life, worked hard, whatever, and I respect that. I don't know, it's puts you in a good mood. You know, good people, good weather, good real estate, beautiful oceans, different colors, different shades. Pretty amazing. Oh yeah. So this is the house that uh, Auntie Sabrina was talking about. Uh, I guess that was their family house, her grandma's house. The company that's working on it, Gundaker Works, they're uh, like a legit, well-known construction company. My friend, she holds some position in admin there. And that's how I know of the company. That's Auntie's house, they're working on it. Like, this is This is Hawaii, you know? Pretty amazing. The owner of the house just left, gave us the shaka. I might buy a lottery ticket today or something. It's feeling good. Check this out. So this home, obviously, it doesn't really need a chimney. Sure, it gets cool. It gets cool. It gets in the 60s occasionally and windy here, but not in need of a fireplace. But you have diamond head in the background. You have the chimney. Look at the nice, the, I forget what that kind of grass is, but I love that kind of grass. You walk on it, your feet don't get dirty. Beautiful, beautiful day. I bet you when grandma owned it, it was probably a smaller plantation home. Was It wasn't that. Stay tuned, I'm gonna tell a story. We've been riding this positive cloud today. I'll tell a less positive one. But yeah, this is the place. My cousin, her mom and dad, my auntie and uncle, myself, we come over here. Auntie would just go swim over there because you can see where it's sandy. And she would just wait for us. And we would go, you kind of have to like walk along these rocks. And you can tell local people because local people are just, they're just going and then the tourists a little bit, not, not used to these rocks and you know, definitely trying to be careful of the slippery green stuff. People would go jump jump off the, the break wall, like the rock wall. Some people get hurt too and that's why, they, that's why they put these gate things up. I actually met a guy who is quadriplegic. On the main line you do cannonballs or jackknives. In Hawaii they have this thing called a suicide. I'm not sure if they do it on the main line, but I never heard about it except for Hawaii. And you kind of jump and go like face first and then open up. And he did it, timed the water wrong. It actually got shallow, broke his neck. Be careful. The other thing is just look at this real estate. There's so few of that or that or that available anywhere in this world. It's so limited. To get to my kind of negative story, my guy here behind the camera told me, what were you doing, fishing? Or you were just, just exploring? Yeah. Just exploring. And so most people stop at Cromwell's. If you keep going around that point, there's another like very, very luxury property. So the, this person felt that people shouldn't be scaling the cliff along their property, had security present on their estate. The security dumped water onto a local person who's exploring. Twice. Twice? We weren't like mopping and cleaning, it was an accident. It was, 100% intentional, right? There's a story in the news right now, a similar thing with someone who owns an estate on Maui. And that's where people go cliff jumping. And so in order to reduce noise, and you know, they claim it's an insurance liability, but they don't own that piece of property. And likewise, just so you know, in Hawaii, you don't own the coastline. You might own that house, but where the sand gets wet, it's not yours. I'll just come out and say, if you wanna buy a house like that, and you wanna dump water on local people who are just enjoying themselves or you want to 
hire security guards, not just local people. So humans in general can't access the ocean. If you enjoy this channel, you get a ton of value. But part of it is, Derek, I need you to help me make sure that I exclude everyone from the ocean. We're probably not going to be a good fit. And that's OK, but I can make a referral is what it is. When you have a certain amount of wealth and you have to think about asset management, liability, exposure, etc., it's fair to want people to be able to stay safe and to hold yourself harmless of liability. That's a different conversation than this is my view, I own it, and I don't want other humans to be able to access it. That's not the culture, nor is that the law in Hawaii. It's really not something that I would participate in. If you're like, Derek, I was gonna buy 20 million with you and you just blew it, let me know. Let me know in the comment section. This is what it is, it's Hawaii, you know, like we wanna access the, our oceans and stuff. I would love to have a beverage with them and talk about how they came to uh, own that kind of real estate and why they chose here. Cause they could probably choose anywhere in the world. I would love to know more about all of these interesting people. Just not the ones that uh, dump water on on great other humans that I know. So we're gonna walk to the point. You guys went inside the house. Pretty mean, huh? I'm gonna bring the, the family back over here. Hey, I'm wearing shoes on the beach. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's against my religion. I've never come and hung out at this beach. I don't know, I feel like I have to hit it at least once, so I'll probably bring my family back in the next month. Just in case I didn't articulate well, the water dumpers, they were way off into the distance. Like you can, barely see the tip of their house. This white building here is actually an art museum. It wasn't the art museum, obviously. Wailai Country Club, I've never golfed here. This is where the Sony Open is. Um, we were just speculating on how much it costs, like how much are the membership fees? I am not sure. First time I came here, this real estate agent, we had just closed the deal and she said, let me take you to a nice lunch. Meet me over here at Plumeria Grill, which is amazing. Uh, my wife and I tried to go for Valentine's in a couple like next, in a week from now, but it was all booked. Admittedly, I didn't grow up in a family where we would stay at the Kahala Hotel or dine at the Kahala Hotel. But I pulled up and there was Maserati, I think maybe a Bugatti, multiple Porsches, like everything was like 200,000 and above or so. And I, I didn't want a valet, so I pulled up to the guy and I'm like, hey, where can I park? I don't need valet. Huh? <laughs> He's like, yeah, you don't need to. Yeah, you know, my car's all dirty because I live in Mililani where it's like constantly raining. You wash your car, it rains again. And so he's like, yeah, just park down there. And I go to park down here and I didn't know he meant like here. So I parked so far away. It was all good. I ended up running into like a medical rep and some of the physicians uh, that I know, talking story and whatnot. They were about to golf. And this is actually a residence area. So this people live here. Hey Siri, how much are membership dues at the YLI Country Club? I don't see any prices. How much does it cost? A membership to YLI, according to reports, requires a $52,000 initiation fee. So we're gonna turn right on Kala, please. And another for sale sign. Yeah, that's a pretty nice house. But look, the house says Hale 5 -0. Like Hawaii Five-O, but Hale means house. So it's either a play on Hawaii Five-O or he's a cop. The further you get away from the ocean, the closer you get to the freeway. In general, the cheaper the real estate, real estate gets. I should say the more affordable, the less expensive. That Hawaii Kai video we have on our channel about the $3.2 million house, we were looking East Honolulu, right? So we're looking anywhere like this side of town, Kahala to Hawaii Kai. And we looked at a home, where was it? We looked at a home somewhere around here, a couple of homes, 2.5 and 2.8 million. What you could get for the price, the Hawaii Kai home just made so much more sense for this family. They didn't need to pay for the proximity to town. Hawaii Kai, you add what with no traffic, another 15? I wouldn't say normally to, half an hour from here. To though. their house though? Up the hill, everything. Up the hill, yeah. You got to consider door to door, right? But just to get to Hawaii Kai, like the first Mauna Lua stoplight, 15 minutes, yeah. Maybe even 12. But with traffic, maybe you're talking half hour, 40 minutes. They definitely did not need to pay that premium because they weren't going to be commuting to town. They were moving home to to work from home or maybe open a practice in Hawaii Kai. But if you need to be close to town or even commute to Kaiser, because you're a physician. Kahala might be the ticket, but you're gonna make a sacrifice in terms of square foot and amenities and whatnot uh, for being this close to town, for sure. Just like you would in any metro area, right? So we are on Kilauea Ave. You can see it starting to shift. You're like, oh wait, we were just on cliff sides and along and amongst this like this luxury zone. And now I see buildings, I see mountains, I see a subway and a McDonald's. 
And um, so this is Kahala Ma. We've really been lacking this video for our Honolulu to East Honolulu series. We did a deep dive in Hawaii Kai. That's a lot of people's favorite video. We've been talking about doing Kahala, but we've just been doing other videos on our you know, shooting days. So we leave kind of a question, right? What is in between Kahala and Hawaii Kai, Hawaii Loa Ridge, Waialaiki, Kuli O'o, Aina Haina. When we're talking about these areas, they, they couldn't take precedence over Hawaii Kai and Kahala. Hawaii Kai and Kahala have their own culture, their own shopping, having like a significant economy, you know, jobs, etc. Aina Haina, Hawaii Loa, Waialaiki, all of these places are really just places to live. Yeah, would you say this is the busiest little intersection of the mall? Guaranteed. In front of Whole Foods right here? Because you Starbucks, Jamba Juice, a couple banks, and the covered parking. You know what? In Hawaii, just like Pearl Ridge, yeah? if you park Pearl Ridge in the summer in the middle, you know when you get into your car, there's going to be a certain level of sweating. Go figure. A lot of financial services, lenders, real estate companies make it a point to be in Kahala Mall. So that was Kahala. We saw some amazing luxury real estate. We saw some kind of normal real estate. The mall, the country club, you know, that really showcased the way we see Kahala through a local's lens. And speaking of local Kahala people, shout out to Auntie. We love it when we get those dimes, you know, local perspectives, totally candid. Drop us some comments, leave us some love. We're gonna go eat. We make YouTube videos about Hawaii. I think what distinguishes us is we just, I just give a local's perspective, you know? Like, Yay! like we were just like over, local? yeah, yeah. We both, we both went to high school together. I love this area, Black Point, Kaiko. There's plenty of ocean views on this island but not so often that you can get elevated, but still the ocean's like right there. I love and that's Kahala, right? Like 